Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Hello, teacher. How are you? How are you? Well, I am a little bit sick today. <laughs> what about you? Fine, teacher. Oh, excellent. Okay, nice to have you here, Merlene. Thank you so much. Wow, we have a new student, right? Mariela Carmen. Hello. I cannot listen to you. Ah, yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. Thank you so much. But thanks for being here. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, thank you. Now we have right here Carlita, right? Hello, Carlita. Hello, teacher. How are you today? Fine. Fine. Awesome. Okay. Nice to have you right here. Give me a second and I will start sharing my screen, okay? All right. Here we have it. So it is already 8 p.m., right? So I think that we are going to start. Ready or not, here we go, right? So, guys, what was the topic that we were studying on Wednesday? Do you remember? On Wednesday, what was the topic? Yes, Marlene? The parts of the body. Exactly. Thank you so much, Carlita. Uh -huh. Aha. Teacher, uh -huh. teacher, sorry, I... I want a question. Yes, tell me. I sorry, one no. I, <laughs> I have a question. Okay, yes. Este con respecto a las a las lecciones, esta semana tenemos que entregar la 1 y la 2. Exactly. Yes. One. Uh -huh. La las tareas también de ese de todas las tareas de la 1 y la 2. Yes. All the homework uh -huh. assignments of 1 and 2. Ok, es que yo soy nueva y no sé si, si todo necesitan para, para hoy. No, no, no. It's going to be only this. Let me, give me a second and I will, I will help you with that. Gracias. Ok. So look at it. Are you able to see my screen? Yes? Yes. Ok, so here you go. Look at it. Section 1, what are you going to do? And section 2, what's the matter? Ok. So all the section number one, you can do it, I mean, since Wednesday, I think. Because look at it, we studied this part in which um, you have to choose, right? You have to listen to the audio and you are going to choose. Then let's see another part. Here we have another one <clears throat> in which you have to complete the conversation using the verbs between parentheses, okay? You have to do that between parentheses. Remember that you have to use be plus going to, right? And the last one that we have right here is this one. The reading, right? That we were studying. That was everything about section number one. Now, if we go to section number two, what's the matter? We are going to find this in this part. Aha. Uh -huh. In this part, you are going to listen to an audio and you are going to choose, okay? Conversation number one, what is like the pain that people have? For example, headache, the throat, the neck, okay? In which we were studying the parts of the body on Wednesday, right? Then let me see, here we have another one. And in this one, right? This is something that we are going to do today, okay? We're going to do this, and you also have a reading, a little article, right? Which you have to read this, and then answer these questions, right? Let me see, only six questions, and that will be it, okay? So for today, section okay. one and section two, okay? Thank you, teacher. You're welcome, Marlene. Thank you so much. Okay, so Marlene and Carlita helped me with that, right? And they said that... Uh, we were studying the parts of the body. And that's something true, right? We were also studying this little part. And do you remember? We were studying the names of the fingers. Who can help me? Uh-huh. Who remembers that? Uh-huh. Who remembers that part? Nobody. Hmm? Uh, thumb finger. Uh-huh. Thumb finger. 
index finger. Uh -huh. My middle. Middle. Mi middle finger. Uh -huh. um, quiero ver. Ring finger. Exactly. And pinky, pinky finger. fingers. Exactly. Thank you too. Great. That was awesome. Excellent. That was it, right? The name of the fingers. Thank you so much. And we were also studying this little dialogue, right? That we have right here in which we were learning the pronunciation of some words. For example, we have right here, this word, right? Who remembers the pronunciation of that word? Of this one. Headache. Headache. Exactly. Headache. It will be headache. What about this one? Uh-huh. Mm. Ah, what about that one? Nobody. Mm? You were not studying, right? Okay. Let's see. Lea Sarai, probably you know, right? What is the pronunciation of this word? Me recuerdo, teacher. Ah, okay. Thank you so much for being honest. Thank you. Let Back me cake. see. Backache, exactly. Back yes. Okay. Backache. Exactly. It will be headache and backache. Okay. Excellent. Another one, flu. Who knows what is flu? What is flu? Gripe. Exactly. That is gripe. So we, we are going to be talking about illnesses. Do you remember the meaning of illnesses? Enfermedades. Enfermedades. Exactly. Enfermedades, right? That is illnesses. So here we have this little dialogue. Later, if we have time, I will ask for volunteers to help me reading that. But now we are going to move on into this part in which we are going to talk about health problems, right? Okay, so we are going to be talking about illnesses. So give me a second. I will share my video and please pay attention okay be ready and pay attention and let me know if you can listen to the audio please hi everyone in this class you'll learn how to express different illnesses for example i have a headache i don't feel well let's get started by listening to a conversation title i feel homesick i feel homesick all right they mentioned something, right? I feel homesick. Who remembers what is homesick? Nostalgico. Exactly. Yes. Thank you so much that you miss your home, right? Excellent. Okay, let's continue watching the video. Hey, Kenichi. How are you? Oh, I'm not so good, actually. Why? What's the matter? Well, I have a headache and a backache. Maybe you have the flu. No, I think I just feel a little homesick for Japan. That's too bad. But maybe I can help. Let's have lunch at that new Japanese restaurant. That's a great idea. Thanks, Brian. I feel better already. Now let's take a look at the examples on this chart. Have plus noun. Feel plus adjective. What's the matter? What's wrong? I have a headache. I have a backache. I have the flu. How are you? How do you feel? I feel homesick. I feel better. I don't feel well. Negative adjectives. Sick. Awful. Terrible. Miserable. Positive adjectives. Fine. Great. Terrific. Fantastic. I would like to start by explaining. Okay, now let's see the pronunciation of these things, right? What's the matter? It means what's the problem, right? And then what's wrong? Que anda mal, okay? That is the meaning. Then we have the first one. I have headache. You already know the meaning, right? Oh, I, I have headache. And then we have, I have backache. 
And then the teacher, right? I have the flu, I can say. Another one, how are you? This is something that I ask you at the beginning of the class, right? How are you? I said always. Then we'll have, how do you feel? And I can say, I feel homesick. I feel better. Who knows what is the meaning of I feel better? Mm -hmm. I feel better? What's the meaning of that? Me siento bien. I Me si sentirse mejor. Exactly. Thank you too. Sentirse mejor, right? I feel better. For example, me, I was sick the whole week, right? So Marlene can ask me, teacher, how do you feel? And I can say, Marlene, I feel better. Me siento mejor, right? Ya mejoré. Then we have another one. I can also say, right? No, Marlene, I don't feel well. What is that? I don't feel well, Marlene. Uh-huh. No me siento, no me siento bien. Exactly, no me siento bien. I don't feel well, Marlene. Okay, because I have the flu. Then we have negative adjectives. We have sick. This is something that you know, right? Sick. Then we have awful. Mm -hmm. What is awful? Do you know the meaning of that word or not? Awful. That is a negative adjective. Uh huh. Who can help me with that? Awful. <clears throat> that is going to be horrible. Okay. Horrible. I feel awful today. Okay. Then we have terrible. This is something easy for you, right? In Spanish, it's going to be the same meaning. Terrible. <laughs> and then I can say I feel miserable. Okay. Look at the pronunciation. Miserable. Okay. Miserable. There you go with the meaning. And the meaning is also easy. Then we have some positive adjectives. We have fine. I feel fine, okay? Me siento bien. We can say it. Then I feel great. You already know that. Great. Then I feel terrific. Do you know of the meaning about terrific or not? Mm, terrible. No, terrible. because this is a positive adjective. Fantastic. Uh. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, no. Exactly. That can be fantastic also. Okay. No. This is a positive adjective. So, Pero el de arriba, perdón, yeah. el de arriba dice fantastic. ¿Qué quiere decir? Fantástico. Also. Right. That is another el, way. El anterior. Tienen el mismo significado, pero en diferentes palabras. Son sinónimos. Ah, okay. Okay. Yes, so I can say, right, for example, uh, Sarai told me something good in English, right, with a good pronunciation, I can say, ah, oh, Sarai, terrific, okay, and that is something good, right, that is something good, most of people tend to think that terrific is something bad, but no, that is something good, okay, Sarai, you did terrific, some people say terrifico, no, right, fantastico, the opposite in English. And then we have fantastic. The same meaning in Spanish. Okay? So, do you have questions about the pronunciation, guys? Or not? No problems with the pronunciation, sí. right? Yes? Eh, la primera que dice, I feel home... Homesick. Del... Homesick. Homesick. Thank you. You're welcome. Another question? No more questions. No. Okay, so we can continue with the video, okay? Pay attention, please. Explaining the examples on the left-hand side of this chart. How to form statements with have plus noun. We can follow this formula to do that. Subject plus have plus noun. Let's analyze the first example. I have a headache. The subject is I. Then we need to put have. Finally, we include a noun, a headache. Let's take a look at one more example. I have the flu. The subject is I. 
Then we need to put half. Finally, we include the noun, the flu. Now, I would like to show you how to form statements with feel plus adjective. We can follow this formula, subject plus feel plus adjective. Let's analyze the example, I feel homesick. The subject is I, then we need to add feel. Finally, we need to put an adjective, homesick. Or it can be any of these adjectives towards the right. All right, guys, something that I want you to be careful, okay, and pay attention to this. Remember that you can only use feel plus an adjective, okay? So you can never, never, never say, I have sick. No, okay? I feel sick. You cannot say, I have terrible. No, I feel terrible, okay? Because as you can see, these ones are adjectives, okay? And as you could notice right here, it says feel plus, and then we have adjective, right? So you can use feel with these things, right? With these adjectives. So pay attention to that little detail, okay? I feel sick, awful, terrible, miserable, fine, great, terrific, fantastic. Now it's your turn to practice giving examples of your own. Try to use the vocabulary and try to make examples using have plus noun and. All right, so let's have a little practice about that. For example, let me see people that is here. Raquel Avegaillo, could you give me one example, please? Using have or using feel? Mm-hmm. Raquel Abigail, can you give me one example? I feel fine. I feel fine. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, let's see. Another example, Maria Leticia, please. Another example. Mm -hmm. Using have or feel, you decide. Aha, Maria Leticia. I feel great. I feel great. Sí. Uh -huh. You can say one more time, please. I feel great. I feel great. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now let's see another person. Uh, Estrella, please. Good night. Hello. Can you give me one Hello. example, please? Um, I feel... Um... Great. I feel great. Aha, it okay. will be I feel great. 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 Exactly. Thank you so much. Um, what about you, Sarai? Please, can you give me one example? I feel better. Exactly. Good job. What about you, Marta? Can you give me one? Ajá. ¿Cuál sería ahorita? I feel what? I feel what? Uh, Ajá. I feel what? You can use these adjectives. I feel sick, awful, terrible, miserable. And you have the options. So, mm -hmm. I feel what, Marta? Sick. I feel sick. Okay, good job. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Rosa Elba, hello. Can you give me one example, please? I feel terrible. 
Excellent. What about you, Carlita? I feel fantastic. Excellent. What about you, Marleni? I feel terrific. Excellent. Good job. Amazing. Okay. So let's continue with this. For sure that if you are sick or if you have an illness, you need medicine, right? To feel better. So look at it. We are going to study some medicine that we can have in English. Okay. So pay attention to the pronunciation that we have because later we are going to use it. Okay, so give me a second to play the video. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn the names of common medications for health problems. Let's listen and practice. Common medications. Antacid. Muscle cream. Aspirin. Cough syrup. Cough drops. Cold pills. Eye drops. Now, I would like... Okay, there you go with the pronunciation, right? Only like five or six. Hang <clears throat> Sorry, the teacher got problems. It's going to be antacid, okay? Antacid. That is going to be antacid in Spanish, right? When you have reflujo, right? Antacid. You can drink that. Then we have muzzle cream. Muzzle cream. What is that? Do you know? Muzzle cream. What is that? Uh huh. Como crema. crema per... Uh huh. Crema para de músculos, como dijo ella. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Thank you so much. Para el dolor de los músculos, right? So you can say muzzle cream. Listen to the pronunciation. We don't say muscle, muscle, no. Muzzle. Okay? Muzzle. Muzzle cream. In that way. Pay attention to that, okay? Then we have aspirin. Aspirin. Another one. We have cough syrup. syrup sorry. Cough syrup. Syrup. Okay? In that way. Then we have another one, cough drops. But what is the difference between these ones? Do you know cough syrup and cough drops? What is the difference that we have between them? Who knows? Uno es jarabe y el otro son pastillas. Exactly, in that way, right? Easy peasy, right? This is jarabe and we say jarabe as syrup, okay? And these ones, as Carlita said, are pastillas, right? So we can say drops, or you can also say pills. Okay, so you have the two ways. You can say drops or pills, and there you go. The meaning is the same, pastillas, right? Another one, we have cold pills. Cold pills, okay? What is cold? Do you know what is cold? Uh huh. Probably Sarai knows what is cold, Sarai. Mm -hmm. What is this word? Cold. Uh huh. Yes, Sarai. Uh huh. Let me see. You don't know? No sé. Okay, no problem. Thank you for being honest. It's going to be resfriado, right? Resfriado. Pastillas para el resfriado. It will be cold pills. Okay. Oh. Yes. And then oh, you have... Resfriado. Yes, Marta? Cold, cold es, res, es para resfriado. Exactly. Yes. Completa la palabra. Cold pills. There you go. Cold oh, pills. pills. Cold pills. There you go with the pronunciation. Another one. Here we have another one. Eye drops, right? Gotas para los ojos. It will be eye drops. Okay. There you go with that. Do you have any question about the pronunciation of this? Or everything is clear, right? No questions? No questions, right? Because you know this. Uh-huh, Rosa Elba. 
No question. Excellent. Thank you so much for answering me. So look at it. We are going to study something interesting today. And this is imperatives. Okay. Imperatives. What is that? Uh -huh. Who knows what are imperatives? <coughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. Who knows? What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say imperatives? La primera cosa que se les viene a la mente. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For example, Raquel Abigail, what are imperatives for you? Uh -huh. Consulta. No, no sé. Yeah, or, no. don't worry. I mean, we're trying to guess, okay? Imperativos. Imperativos, exactly. Thank you so much, Carlita, and thank you so much. So, imperatives are imperativos in English, right? In Spanish, sorry. Because we have the both of them in English and in Spanish. So we are going to see right now what are imperatives in a conversation, okay? I'm going to read- Hi, everyone. In this class, you- I'm going to read first the, pronun the pronunciation, the dialogue, and later I will ask for a volunteer to help me, okay? So pay attention to the pronunciation that we have in the words. <clears throat> here we have, here we have, hello, Mrs. West, how are you today? Not so good. So, what's wrong exactly? I'm exhausted. Mm, why are you so tired? I don't know. I just can't sleep at night. Okay, let's take a look at you. <clears throat> some minutes later, right? I'm going to give you some pills. Take one pill every night after dinner. Okay, and don't drink coffee, tea, or soda. Give me a second because I have one message in the chat. You cannot listen to me? Yes or not? Don't, don't work too hard. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Marlene is yes. having problems, right? Okay, Marlene. I think that you are having problems. You can go out of the meeting. Puede salirse? Y volver a ingresar. Tal vez es problema de la computadora. Okay? Probably. So I'm going to continue with this. <clears throat> it says, okay. And then, and don't drink coffee, tea, or soda. Anything else? Yes. Don't work too hard. And it says, all right. Thanks, Dr. Young. And there you go. Okay? That was it. The conversation easy, right? So... Um, any question, any new word or something like that in this conversation? Se me escucha, teacher. Yes, I can listen to you. Yes, Marlene. You don't? Okay. Give me a second. I will type it, okay? Okay, do you have any question about about it? No? Every, everything is clear. Teacher. Yes. Um I on the dice I am exhausted. Mm -hmm. Exhausted. Uh -huh. The pronunciation is going to be I am exhausted. Exhausted. Como... No sé, como... ¿Qué significará en español? Como exhausto. Ah, ok. Exhausto. Mm -hmm. Good job. Ok, thank you so much. <clears throat> so there you go. Do you have any other question about it? No? No more questions. Ok, if we don't have more questions, right? You can read this because this is something easy for you. So I'm going to have Estrella. Estrella as the doctor, right? And then I'm going to have, let me see, Sarai, okay, as Mrs. West, 
So please go ahead. Something, guys. Remember? Intonation. Okay? How are you today? What's wrong exactly? Okay? So there you go. Please. I am all ears. <clears throat> okay. Um, hello, Mr. West. How are you today? Not so good. So, what's wrong exactly? And it sounds exhausted. Exhausted. One more time. I am exhausted. I am exhausted. Great. Mm, why are you why are you so tired? I don't know. I just can't sleep all night. Okay, let's let's take a look at you. A look at you. A few minutes later, I am going to give um you some pills. The one pills every night after dinner. Okay. Um. And don't drink coffee, tea, or soda. Anything else? Yes, don't work too hard. All right, thanks. Okay, excellent. You see, I like that pronunciation and that intonation. Perfect. Good job. You see, very beautiful English. Okay, so good. Excellent. There you go. <clears throat> so, I want you to pay attention to these little things. Look at it. We have, let's take a look at you. Take one pill every night. And here we have another one. And the other one is going to be, don't work too hard. Those ones are imperatives in English. Okay. Here we have an example of imperatives. Let's take a look at you. As you could see, this is a sentence, but we don't have a subject, okay? Why? Because we have the subject implicit. Tenemos el sujeto implícito o tácito, okay? Tacit or implicit subject. Because you know that between parentheses, right? We can have the subject you. <clears throat> For example, I can say you let's take let's take some uh, sorry <laughs> you let's take a look at you, right? Another one, you take one pill every night after dinner. Okay, you don't work too hard. So there you go. But people in English prefer not to say this, right? They delete this you and only say. Let's take a look at you. Take one pill every night after dinner, okay? We use it to give orders, okay? For example, I can say, ay, estrella, pay attention, okay? I can say to Raquel Abigail, Raquel, listen to the audio, okay? I can say to Carlita, Carlita, say this word, okay? For example, this is an imperative, and I am giving you an order or an instruction, okay? This is the way in which we use imperatives. And there you go with an example, okay? So let's continue with this part. Let's continue studying imperatives. Let's listen and practice. Don't work. To I'm going to get right. Thanks, Dr. Young. The conversation that we just heard illustrates the conversation between a doctor and a patient. Typically, whenever we are sick and we go to the doctor, we're going to receive instructions from the doctor so that we can get better. We use imperatives to give instructions. Imperatives. Take a pill every four hours. Rest in bed. Drink lots of juice. Don't work too hard. 
Don't stay up late. Don't drink soda. To form imperatives is very simple. Just add the verb. No subject is necessary. Then a complement. On the left hand side of the chart, we can see positive imperatives. Let's analyze them. Take a pill every four hours. The verb is take. The complement is a pill every four hours. On the right hand side of the chart, you can see negative imperatives. Don't work too hard. In this case, we're going to follow this next formula. Don't plus verb plus complement. Don't work is the verb and the complement too hard. Now, I would like for you to give some examples of your own. Think of the advice or instructions that you or your doctor gives whenever you have some kind of illness. For example, if you have a cold, take cough syrup, don't drink cold drinks. After you finish this task, share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, there you go, right? The way in which we created, we create that, right? Imperatives. So as you could see, if we want to create an imperative sentence, the only thing that we need in a positive way, only the verb, right? The verb, and then you continue with the complement. But it's going to be a little bit different if we have a negative sentence. In this case, we need the particle don't, okay? Don't plus the verb and the complement. So I want you to be doctors right now, okay? You are going to be my doctors and let's imagine that I am the patient, right? And I will go to the doctor and say, okay, my doctors, because you are more than one, right? I, I have the flu and I want you to give me some recommendations, okay? You can tell me, for example, okay, if you have a flu, you can rest in bed, don't drink soda, take a pill every eight hours, okay? And things like those. I want you to be doctors for me and give me some orders, some instructions so that I can feel better, okay? On Monday, I feel better because of you, my doctors. Is that clear? For example, Raquel Abigail, what are we going to do? <clears throat> uh -huh. Yes, Raquel Abigail. What are we going to do? Uh -huh. I don't know. Yes? No comprendí. You don't understand. Okay, no problem. Let me see. Probably Carlita. <clears throat> Aha, Carlita. Eh, take. Um... Okay, okay. Carlita, hold on, hold on, hold on. Explíquele a, a Raquel Abigail qué vamos a hacer. Ah, okay. La teacher está enferma. Uh -huh. Entonces nosotros vamos a hacer el doctor. Exacto. Vamos a recetar medicamento y también le tenemos que decir algunas cosas que puede hacer para que ella se pueda sentir mejor. Exactly. Good job. Thank you so much, Carlita. Did you understand, Raquel? La oración sería take uh, y el complemento de, de la medicina. Exactly. You can tell me take a pill. Take acetaminophen, right? Take a bit of grip, for example. Okay. Okay. And you can give me some recommendations. For example, uh, don't swim, for example, because I have the flu, right? Don't swim. Aspirina. Uh -huh. Aspirina sería... Aspirin. Exactly. Aspirin. Okay. In that way. So go ahead. I'm going to give you only three minutes to do so. Okay. Only three minutes to give me some recommendations. So go ahead because time is running. 
Remember, if you have questions or doubts, I'm going to be right here to help you. Um, <coughs> 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 Okay, you are missing one more minute, okay? <clears throat> so hurry up, my little doctors. All right, time is up, okay? So let's start. I need at least that you tell me at least two recommendations, okay? So I'm going to start, let me see, with Maria Leticia. Please go ahead and give me two recommendations. Aha, uh -huh, my little doctor, Doctora Cordova, right? <laughs> Sería, take the aspirin every eight hours and rest. Excellent. Um, uh -huh. Don't work too hard. Excellent. Okay. That was so good. Thank you so much, Maria Leticia. Maria Leticia, probably, right? For Monday, I can see your face, right? And you can turn on your camera because I want to see your beautiful face on Monday. Okay? <laughs> Probably. <right? laughs> Please, it will be great. Thank you so much, Maria Leticia. Muy now bien. let's see another doctor, Dr. Nieto, right? Estrella Guadalupe, it's your turn. Please go ahead. Um, is you. Have a flu, uh -huh. um, so um, they um, aspirin uh, every eight hours. Okay, what else? Que mas? Um, don't um, don't drink a uh, don't drink cold. Okay, alcohol, it will be. 
Okay, good recommendation. Okay, don't drink alcohol. Good, okay. Let's see another doctor that I have right here. Dr. Carballo, right? Martita, is your turn. ¿Cómo se dice alcohol? Alcohol. Alcohol. Yes, that is the way you say it. Alcohol. Alcohol. Mm. Mm. Take all. No, sería, but take all. Um, ¿Cómo es que se dice cabeza? Head. 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 Head, exactly. Head. Tyson. Alcohol. Head. Okay, how come? ¿Cómo así? How come? <laughs> you want me to, to take alcohol? <laughs> O sea, una recomendación, echarle, o sea, para el dolor de cabeza, o sea, echarle... Put alcohol in your head. Ah, ok, I was thinking like drink alcohol. If I am sick, right? Ok, Martita, it will be put alcohol in your head. Ok. In your head. Exactly. Okay, Martito. Thank you so much. Good job. Okay, thank you. <laughs> now let's see, Dr. Escobar, right? It's your turn. Give me my recommendation, right? If you have a call, you need drink tea of chamomile. Tea or what? Sorry? Chamomile. Manzanilla. Ah, yes, I got it. Okay, yes, thank you so much. C, what is another one? Your chamomile with lemon and honey. Okay, excellent. And don't swim in the pool. Excellent. Thank you so much. Good recommendation. What about you, Dr. Herrera? Herrera, right? Carolina Herrera. <laughs> what about you, Raquel Abigail? What are your recommendations for me? If you have a cold, uh -huh. um, uh -huh. <laughs> it's drunk, creo que se, se dice, pero eso sería para Los ojos, ¿verdad, teacher? Ajá, eye drop. It's going to be para los ojos. Ay, yes. no. yeah. Aspirin. Okay, so it will be take an aspirin, okay? Take, take a aspirin. An aspirin. An aspirin. Exactly. Take an take, aspirin. Take a mouse green. What? Most cream. Aha, uh -huh. muscle cream? Yes. Okay, but I have to take muscle cream or oh. I have to put. And you. I have. Aha. Uh -huh. Seria, I have um, a most, a muscle. Muscle um, cream. Muscle cream. Okay, so Raquel Abigail, it's going to be? Put muscle cream. Okay. Recuerden, vamos a ocupar los imperativos para que me den una orden. Okay. Entonces, mi doctor Herrera me va a decir, póngase crema para los músculos. Okay. Tome una aspirina. Okay. Descanse por las noches, for example. And you can say that in English, take an aspirin. Okay. Rest in bed, for example. Okay, Raquel? Para, para ponerse sería entonces how? Put. Put. You have. No, no, no. Put. No. Poner. That is the verb. Put. Put some, as some muscle cream. Okay. But I have cold. Tengo un resfriado. Y para los resfriados me puedo poner crema para los músculos. No, 
No, right. Ajá. ¿Qué puedo tomar para un resfriado, Raquel? Um, el alcohol podría ayudar. ¿Alcohol? ¿Really? You want me to drink alcohol? No, ¿Quiere que tome eh, alcohol? No, para la... Bueno, pomada para la cabeza podría ah, ser. Ah, for the head, right? The same as Marta, right? Put alcohol in your head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes? Sí, teacher, la verdad es que me he perdido. Con esta me he perdido. Ok, ¿quiere que le explique de nuevo? O sea, para... para para estamos eh, lo que necesitamos para Ajá. el dolor de cabeza. Por ejemplo, si yo digo es que la, tengo la gripe. Es, entonces yo tendría que formar la oración. Primero iría. No precisamente tendría que decir take a, a aspirin. A aspirin. Sino que hay new, eh, you need, no. No, no, no. Para los imperativos solo necesitamos el verbo, ¿ok? Take an aspirin, for example, uh -huh. ¿ok? Tómate una aspirina si yo estoy enferma. Por ejemplo, si tengo dolor de cabeza, usted me puede decir, tómese un acetaminofen, right It will be take and yes, Marta. Acetaminofen, ¿cómo se pronuncia? It will be it it could be acetaminofen, right? Oh, okay. Okay, Raquel. So we need basically the verb and then the complement. Okay, then the verb and the complement. As you could see, take a pill every four hours. Rest in bed. Drink lots of juice. ¿Está claro, Raquel? ¿O no? Mm, no. Sí, teacher. ¿Sí? Sí, este... O sea, yo pensé que precisamente tendríamos que eh, agregar solo la oración de take a... Uh, de este... No tendríamos que ampliarla, pero ya, ya... Hoy oh, sí, ya. Ok. Oh, sí. Y cuando Gracias. está en negativo, tenemos que poner el don't al inicio de la oración, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, mm -hmm. si yo estoy enferma, si yo tengo gripe, no me va a recomendar ir a nadar, ¿ok? Entonces usted me va a decir, don't swim, ¿ok? No nade, no fume, por, por ejemplo, right? Don't smoke, ¿ok? It will be in that way. Is it clear, Raquel? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you so much. Now let's continue with my last doctor. Let me see, Dr. Kankura. Can you give me my recommendation, please? Uh, take a cold pill every eight hours. Red for two days at home. Drink and no water. Okay, excellent, Dr. Akanjura. Amazing. Okay, good recommendations. That was so great. Thank you so much. Okay, so here we go with the imperatives. Okay, look at this. We are going to do this activity today. So sorry for the quality of this, right? As you could see, here we have some verbs in this box, some verbs. Here we have the verb called, listen, see, take, not go, not worry, not drink, and not eat. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? We are going to match the verbs with the complements that we have right here. For example, a dentist. Ah, I can call the dentist, right? So with an imperative sentence, it will be call. A dentist. Okay. For example, here we have not worry. Pero no podemos poner not worry too much. Entonces ponemos don't. Cuando vamos a hacer oraciones negativas, ocupamos don't. 
don't worry too much. Okay? Don't worry too much. Another one, for example, two aspirins. ¿Cuál sería aquí? Two aspirin. Take. Exactly. Take. Good job. Excellent. So it will be take two aspirin. I will type it right here. Give me a second. It will be in that way. Exactly. Take two aspirin. What about to a school? Take mm -hmm. go. Not go. Not go. Not go. Ah, but we say not go or don't go. Don't go. Exactly. We say don't go. Okay. Don't go. In that way. Excellent. The other one that we have. We have to relaxing music. Aha. Uh -huh. What is the verb for this one? Listen. Exactly. Listen. Listen to relaxing music. What about number six? A doctor. See a doctor. Excellent. It will be see a doctor. Perfect. Another one, coffee. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah? Not drink. Aha. Uh -huh. Not drink. Yes. Coffee. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at it. In this case, we don't have to say not. No don't. problem. Exactly. Don't. We say don't. No. Don't drink coffee. Okay. No vamos a decir not drink coffee, pero sí podemos decir don't drink coffee. Okay. What about the other one? Any candy? Don't eat. Excellent. There you go, right? Don't eat any candy. It will be in that way. Don't eat any candy. Okay, there you go with this. This is part of the homework assignments Oops, that you have. Es parte de las tareas que ustedes tienen, okay? Entonces, si entraron a la clase, ya tienen las respuestas, okay? There you go, you see? A prize for being responsible, okay? Entonces, una cosita más que les quiero decir. En esta parte, cuando hablamos de los imperativos, remember intonation in English, right? We have intonation for asking questions, for positive sentences, and also for negatives. So look at it. We have an intonation for imperative sentences, okay? We go down in imperative sentences. So I can say, take some aspirin. And we go, some aspirin. We don't say, take some aspirin. No, right? Take some aspirin. Another one, go to bed. Use some muscle cream, you see? Another one. Oops, give me a second. Don't drink coffee. Don't work too hard. Okay? Don't work too hard. Another one. Don't exercise this week. Okay? Be careful with the intonation that you have. For example, who can help me reading the first one with a perfect intonation? Okay? Who can help me with the aspirin? Pero, pero no es en todos los imperativos. Yes, in all the imperatives, you have to give an intonation. Todos los imperativos, o sea, la entonación va como disminuyendo. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Disminuyendo. Okay. Uh -huh. So, can, who can help me reading the first one? The, this first example. With a good intonation, right? Uh -huh. Nobody. Mm, no volunteers today. Okay. Okay. Some aspirin. Exactly. Good job, Martita. In that way. Take some aspirin. In that way. What about number two? This one. Who can help me with that? Go to bed. Exactly. Easy, right? Go to bed. Another one. This one. 
you summon muscle cream. Mm -hmm. One more time. Use, use some muscle cream. Exactly. Good job. Excellent. What about this one? Don't, don't dry coffee. Uh -huh. Don't drink. It will be. Drink coffee. One more time. Don't drink coffee. Exactly. You go down. Don't drink coffee. What about this one? Uh huh. Nobody. I have to choose my volunteer. Don't work too no. hard. Exactly. Good job. Don't work too hard. What about this one? Don't exercise this week. One more time. Don't exercise this week. Excellent. Good intonation. Okay, so there you go with this part, right? Here you have imperatives. Easy, right? Easy as A, B, C. Easy for you. Okay, so do you have any question or any doubt about imperatives? No, right? Clear as water today. Clear as water, not as horchata, right? No Clear. Question? Clear. Excellent. <laughs> clear thank you so much okay just one thing before we go remember for today section one and section two okay recuerden si tienen preguntas o dudas pueden hacérmelas al whatsapp privado o pueden hacerlas en el grupo para que un compañero les ayude okay so if there are no more questions i think that that will be all for today okay i think that that's going to be all and Bye-bye. See you on Monday. Okay? Bye-bye, my little butterflies. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.